Please like the video. One of the master keys to understanding our era is seeing all the ways in which conservatives and progressives have traded attitudes and impulses. The populist rights attitude toward American institutions has the flavor of the 1970s, skeptical, pessimistic, paranoid, while the mainstream, MSNBC-watching left has a strange new respect for the FBI and CIA. The online right likes transgression for its own sake, while cultural progressivism dabbles in censorship and worries that the First Amendment goes too far. Trumpian conservatism flirts with postmodernism and signals Michel Foucault, its progressive rivals are institutionalist, moralistic, confident in official narratives and establishment credentials. These reversals are especially evident in a pair of prominent headlines from the last week. If you had been told at any point from, say, 1970 to 2005 that a disturbed-seeming man living in the Bay Area with a history of involvement with nudist activists and the hemp jewelry trade had allegedly followed his paranoid political delusions into a plan to assault an important national politician. The reasonable assumption would have been that his delusions bellinged to the farthest reaches of the left and therefore his target was probably some notable Republican. By the same token, if you had been told in George W. Bush's presidency that a trove of government documents would reveal the Department of Homeland Security essentially trying to collude with major corporations to regulate speech it considers dangerous or subversive, an effort extending from foreign threats to domestic ones, you would have assumed that this was all Republican overreach, a new McCarthyism, and that progressives would be up in arms against it. In our world, though, things are otherwise. The man who allegedly attacked Paul Pelosi while hunting the Speaker of the House did, seemingly, belling to left-wing, left-coast culture in the not-so-distant past. But at some point in his unhappy trajectory, he passed over to the paranoias of the extreme right, probably not in some semi-rational radicalization process in which he watched too many attack ads against Nancy Pelosi but more likely in a dreamlike way, the nightmares of QAnon matching his mental state better than the paranoias of the left. His journey's violent endpoint was singular and extreme, but this kind of left to right migration has more normal correlatives, the New Age QAnon overlap, the COVID-era migration of formerly left-wing skeptics of big pharma onto right-wing shows and platforms, the way that all doubts about the medical establishment are now coded as right-wing, Trumpy, populist. And the political right's response to the Pelosi attack reflects these shifts as well. The ethos of Fox Mulder in The X-Files, Trust No One, is a now dominant value on the right, which in this case encouraged a swift leap from reasonable questions about the details of the assault, based on inaccurate initial reports, to a very specific narrative about a gay assignation that the cops and the Pelosi's were presumably covering up. As of this writing, several public references to this theory from prominent conservatives have been deleted. But the cover-up narrative will probably survive indefinitely as a reference point, an underground truth, like the left-wing conspiracies of old. One of those deleted tweets belling to Elon Musk, the new impresario of Tividir, and it inevitably became an exhibit in the case for liberal panic over his takeover, what could be more indicative of the platform's imminent descent into a democracy-destroying hellscape than conspiracy theories spread by the chief twit himself? But the alternative to Mask's reign was clarified by the second recent illustration of our left-right reversal, a story from The Intercept, by Lee Fong and Ken Klippenstein, detailing the Department of Homeland Security's migration into the social media surveillance and the pressure the department has tried to exert on internet companies to flag and censor content along lines favored by the national security bureaucracy.